Hey Thrivers, welcome back. I'm your host, Brittany N. Cole. I hope that you have been flourishing, seizing opportunities for growth and learning, and of course, thriving as we've been on a little bit of a hiatus with the podcast. It has been a while, hasn't it? And in fact, it's actually been over a year. But as I always say, every experience that includes the pauses, the silent, mo silent moments, every hiatus, it presents an opportunity for continuous improvement. And that's something that I've been living while we've been apart. During this break, we've really been doing a lot of listening and learning in our work with corporations at Career Thrivers. And we've heard your feedback. We've heard your requests. We've heard your challenges, your hopes, really what you're looking to learn and do to really retain top talent, but really cultivate a culture where everyone can thrive. And we've taken that to heart. We've taken some time to connect with some incredible leaders and experts, and we want to bring them to you here on this new season of the Career Thrivers podcast. So what is this season all about? Well, this is all about owning your power to thrive in your career and to lead your life. We'll be diving into how you as an individual or as a leader can really harness those unique strengths that you have, leverage opportunities to overcome challenges and really explore fresh perspectives on leadership, career growth, cultivating an inclusive organization and so much more. So after this quick break, I'm gonna share some of the things that I've been up to over this hiatus, including some of the key insights that I've gained that have really inspired this season's theme. So we're back Thrivers, and I'm so excited to start this season three journey with you. Today, we dive deep into a theme that will guide us throughout the season, owning your power to thrive in your life and in your career. So let's start with what I believe is a truly inspiring story of a CEO that not only changed her organization, but really connected business and culture in an innovative way. And her name is Indra Nui. You may be familiar with her story. She's the former CEO of PepsiCo. And of course, she worked in a male-dominated industry, climbed the ladder of success, and headed one of the world's really largest multinational corporations. And during her journey, she faced this mountain of a task to really transform PepsiCo. And she did that through owning her power and initiating this performance with purpose initiative. And I think this is such an incredible example. This was a visionary approach to really doing business that aimed to deliver top financial performance, of course, but also while being responsive to the needs of the world around us. It was really positioned to, intended rather to position PepsiCo for long-term success, but also to instill a sense of purpose amongst its employees. So this initiative launched during New Year's tenure as a CEO of PepsiCo from 2006 to 2018. And I wanna share with you some of the pillars because you, you hear these buzzwords now, but she was really ahead of the game, right? So there were three fundamental pillars of this initiative. The first was around human sustainability. And this pillar was about really thinking innovatively about how to provide healthier food and beverage options. So human sustainability was number one. Number two was environmental sustainability. We all know as leaders, ESG is hot now. Well, she was on the forefront of this. So really thinking about efforts to uh, reduce PepsiCo's environmental footprint was the second part of this initiative. And then the third part of this initiative was a focus on PepsiCo's employees. So really thinking about how do we foster an inclusive and a diverse culture within the organization and really ensure that there is a safe and inclusive workplace for belonging. So under this initiative, uh, PepsiCo made some significant strides. And if you're like me, you're like, okay, that sounds like an incredible strategy. What happened? <laughs> what were the results? So here are some of the things that stood out for me. So one, by 2015, the sales from what they called their guilt-free products, such as diet drinks and snacks, co constituted about 45% of the company's total revenue, right? So they went from really focusing in on that human sustainability piece and that those products taking up almost 50% of their revenue. Uh, the second goal that they delivered was over a billion dollars in net savings from eco-efficiency just in their operations. So really um, taking that environmental sustainability seriously. And then, 
And then ar around talent, right? The company reported achieving gender parity in their management roles, right? So I know I'm talking to leaders, right? They were committed to diversity, inclusion and engagement and were named the world's most admired companies like for several years uh, in Fortune magazine. And so this initiative, if you look up or if you just Google her name, uh, was really regarded as a landmark move of, again, integrating sustainability and inclusion into the core business strategy. And in order to achieve this, Nuyi navigated the resistance. She stayed true to her instincts and she transformed the organization. And I believe that her story illustrates what a leader can accomplish when they own their power, stay true to their instincts, and drive positive change. So we're on this theme of owning your power, and whenever I think about a theme, I gotta jump first, it's the teacher in me, right, to, to the definition. So when we talk about owning your power in leadership, what does that mean? Well, I think it's important that we recognize that power isn't just about your position or your title. Right. That's what we call positional power. So it's what you have uh, due to the role that you play inside of your organization. So if you think about your people leader or your executive level leader, your CEO, right, that's positional power. There's also another kind of power that's called personal power. And personal power is about influence. About, it's about the influence that you wield because of who you are right? Your values, your skills, your emotional intelligence, your ability to connect with people, to inspire change and action and to motivate those around you. And when you think about personal power, authenticity and self-awareness are the two competencies that rise to the top, right? So being authentic really means being true to your values, your beliefs, and who you are at your core. It's about aligning your actions with your inner self, those non-negotiables, right? Self-awareness, on the other hand, is about understanding those strengths, understanding those opportunities for growth and how you come across to other people. So when leaders are both authentic and self-aware, they build trust and really create an environment where other people feel valued, they feel empowered, they feel included. Hey Thriver, have you ever had that feeling like you're doing all of the things, but you're still in the same place? If you're ready to unleash your full potential and to move beyond feeling stuck, stagnant, overlooked, and overwhelmed, you're in the right place. I have an exciting tool for you called the Own Your Power Checklist, and it's the ultimate guide to helping you to own your personal power to thrive as a leader. Now this checklist is gonna help you to do four things. Number one, it's gonna help you to own your unique personal power and to really weld it. It's gonna help you to embrace your authenticity, to develop self-awareness, to take ownership and hold yourself accountable. And then lastly, how to trust your instincts and turn those obstacles into opportunities. I'm so excited for you to cultivate an authentic personal brand and remain resilient without it costing you your well-being. Why? Well, because now is the time. Now is the time for you to move beyond the barriers and to create new opportunities. Now is the time for you to stop being passed over and to start being recommended in rooms that you're not even in. Now is the time for you to stop feeling stuck and stagnant and to align your strengths to accelerate your growth. Now is the time for you to step into the leader that you were always meant to be. So don't miss out on this opportunity. Click the link to download the Own Your Power checklist now. Take the next step towards owning your personal power and thriving as a leader. Get your checklist today at careerthrivers.com forward slash podcast. It's your time to thrive. Yet the path to leadership isn't always even. As per McKinsey and Company, women hold only 38% of middle management, 34% of senior management, and a paltry 22% of the C-suite. Now those are the numbers for all women. An intersectional view of the roles held by black and brown women is even starker. Now, although this disparity is startling, it's also an opportunity. It really gets me excited because this is our call to action, y'all. This is our call to challenge the status quo, to create a more inclusive leadership representation at every level of your organization, but it's also a call to action for you to own your power. Ownership and leadership means that you take responsibility for your actions and the outcomes that they produce. It's about standing up, driving change, and inspiring others. How do you take ownership 
in your career and leadership? When I think about this question, I reflect back on my transition from sales to marketing, and I remember it being a time when everyone was telling me, Brittany, a sales leader, be a sales leader. That's the role for you. And I knew that I wanted to be a marketer. I knew that I wanted to understand how the business came together, right? How do we get those insights that we were executing on? And so I owned my power to decide. I ended up becoming a marketer in a role that was a first for the brand. I managed a $20 million budget. I worked with our regional president on culture, having energy management initiatives for the entire marketing department. It was an, an, an incredible experience because I owned my power. But remember, with ownership also comes accountability. And holding ourselves accountable for decisions really strengthens our trust, the credibility, and also our instincts that really help us to have effective decision making. And we're gonna be talking a lot more about this in this season of the podcast. When we think about our journeys, the road to leadership, it definitely has its obstacles. And so how we respond to these hurdles really define us, right? We can treat the challenges as stepping stones or we can treat them as stumbling blocks. The choice is ours. So listen, pauses, slowdowns, setbacks, they're not always hindrances. Often they are opportunities for reflection, for redirection, for growth, for learning, and for thriving. So how can we own our power and thrive in our careers? Two ways, two ways that we're really gonna be taking a deeper dive into in other episodes this season. Number one, by identifying and leveraging your unique strengths. And number two, by creating an authentic personal brand that is a true reflection of who you are. And a bonus, of course, remaining resilient and staying the course even when the going gets tough. So I am so excited to be back. I'm so excited to dive deeper into these topics during this season of the podcast. And with that, Thrivers, we wrap up our first episode back. I hope this discussion really inspires you and really makes you feel empowered and prepares you to own your power. Remember this, you have within you the strength, the patience, and the passion to reach for those aspirations that you have this vision or picture of and really change the world. So until next time, keep thriving.